Hi everyone, I'm Clara Coppi and welcome to another episode of Art History, the familiar perspective within a DAO. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Creatives DAO and Near Protocol for making this possible. Today I'm presenting Li Bo. Born in 1964 to dissident parents under the military dictatorship of Pao Chunggi in South Korea, Li Bo began her career of public performances that pos positioned her own body as both subject and object of the work. These performances channeled the personal and emotional impact of political persecution and restrictive gender roles into the visual form. With a sensibility that is closely aligned with science, science fiction, Li Bo's work investigates the way that modern art, architecture, and technology have shaped both our real and imagined worlds. The artist draws inspiration from diverse sources, including film, literature, and modern of the architecture, as well as European and South Korean history. She creates hybrid forms that convey a fantastical and often disconcerting dystopian vision, made from deliberately contradictory materials that range from organic silk and mother of pearl to manufactured fiberglass and silicone. Her works explore the utopian potentials, but also the darker undercurrents of an increasingly technological culture. Now let's start with her timeline of works to illustrate what I was speaking about. So we start on the, her, her early works in the 19s and 18s and 19s. And here's a quote from her from Li, Li Bo. I had this idea that to survive the oppressive censorship of ideology, artistic expression would be the only way out of, for me. Right at the beginning of her career, uh, Li Bo, at 18 and 19, in, the South Co in South Korea, was a period of transition from military dictatorship to democracy. It was also the time that Li Bo studied sculpture at university and set out on her career as an artist. Li's early work is characterized by the use of her own body as a, and as an artistic medium, for example, in street performances, in which she wears soft sculpture suits resembling all manner of mysterious creatures. The 12-day twelve performance, twelve performance, Sorry for Suffering, You Think I'm a Puppy on a Picnic, from 1990, began when she boarded a plane at Seoul, Seoul's Kimpo Airport and headed for Tokyo, swamped by the heavy flesh-colored material of her bulging bodysuit and ready to let loose on the capital city. Here you can see a picture of Sorry for Suffering, You Think I'm a Puppy on a Picnic on Libu. She had these suits with tentacles and hands, like like the for creatures it was quite something and she tried to onboard on the plane with this and they tried to impede her to doing this but she bought two seats so she could do this leave Seoul as this creature and go to Tokyo and she kept wandering the streets using this In 1997, Majestic Splendor was exhibited as a part of the project's series at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. The artwork, which consisted of garishly decorated raw fish, filled the gallery with a terrible stench, and they were consequently removed shortly after the exhibition opened. It was particularly symbolic that the art museum that had defined modern art thus rejected her attempt to question the concept of ornamented beauty. Because she had incorporated into that attempt the time during which the beauty would deteriorate. Bo used rotting fish and crust in sequence as a commentary on the ephemeral nature of beauty and the powerlessness of women, causing a furor and establishing her international reputation as an emerging artist. You can see a still from Magic Splendor. 
it was an installation with several bags containing this this garnished fish with sippants and they would rot with time i believe this on the bottom is coffee not sure we didn't find this information here another series from label quite a big series the long-standing human desire to achieve some kind of existence that trans transcends the limitations of our physical bodies has led to the depiction of cyborgs and robots in science fiction novels, films, anime, and other forms on, of entertainment. The works in the Boo Cyborg series are invariably incomplete, with missing heads or limbs, and so they hint at both the desire for such futuristic forms but also their impossibility. Their feminine poses and white color remind us of Venus de Milo, but instead of standing on the kinds of plinths that were used in traditional sculpture, they are suspended from the ceiling, thus once again suggesting a gap between ideal and reality. Composed of sexualized and anatomically amorphous robotic fig figures, her cyborg series from 1997 to 2011 also encapsulates the desires and anxieties surrounding genetic engineering, cloning, and cosmetic surgery. Here's a picture of the installation, Cyborg W1 to W4, the, the four of them, from 1998. They are made from cast silicone, polyurethane filling, and paint pigment. And you can see, as mentioned before, they are suspended and missing parts. Now I dive into, into her mid-career work from the 2000s and hear a quote from Libo. The moment I decided to reject accepted conventions and definitions, I was free to question everything. This work is called Chrysalis, and it indicates the coexistence of contrasting metaphors, the softness of larvae and grubs, the hard crust of imagos, and the brilliance of butterflies. The creature is in a form that does not stand on its own. The thinly stretched tentacles appear to be brittle and fragile, while they witness the whiteness of the work conveys a dignified aura similar to that of ancient European sculpture and Korean white porcelain. This science fiction type of creature is a hybrid of animals, insects, plants, and machines. It has been created out of a longing for eternal life, transcending the limits of the human body. Here's a picture from the sculpture Chrysalis from the 2000s. Hand-cut polyurethane panels on aluminum armature polyurethane coating, all white. Next, we have Mon Grand Récit. It's the first series of work that Libo started when her attention shifted from a focus on the body to architecture, landscape, and the history of modernity in 2005. The title, which translates as My Grand Narrative, is meant to ironize Jean-François Jean Lyotard's pronouncement about the impossibility of grand narratives in our age. By adding the personal pronoun ma, the artist says she wanted to express the necessity of devising his stories, albeit subjective, imperfect, and incomplete ones, that can serve as consolation in the absence of grand narratives. Mon Grand Récit, from 2005, is littered with icons and tropes from modernist architecture and utopian dystopian fiction. By juxtaposing disparate ma materials and jumbling reference to utopian modernism, Libo convey a melancholic and complex relationship between reality and fantasy, beauty and tragedy and utopia and dystopia. The work is constructed from common industrial materials including aluminum, glass, synthetic modeling materials, lights, and wood. 
Here you have a still from Monkhan Récit from 2005. Wood, paint, glass crystals, synthetic beads, aluminum, foam, formethane, polystyrene, fiberglass, epoxy resin, lights, stainless steel, and silicone rubber. Lebon's research work on architecture in this context took on a particular scale, resonating with the building and, and Korean history. Her work, Heaven and Earth, touches on the paradoxes of history. The title is taken from the name of the lake in the middle of Beitusan, which is kind of a holy mountain in Korean national myths. It's located in what is today North Korea, so for generations of post-war Koreans in the South, it exists only in their imagination. For them, it is a kind of ideal image, almost an abstraction. In this work, the city-looking oversized bathtub filled with dark ink and ringed by snowy mountain ridges functions as a visual synodoc evoking an entire period ideals and ideological battles and the use of torture to suppress free thought this is heaven and earth from 2007 fiberglass plaster tiles plastic steel ink plywood and mortar composite now we see her recent works from 2010 to today here are the quotes from libu I feel that when an image represents the body or another figure, it can often overshadow the production method or the material used because the image itself is too strong. I thought that if I made my images more abstract, I could divide these different forces in a more balanced way. Here's an installation from Livu. Civitas Solis, second, on the left, and a detail of it on the right. It's from 2014, made from polycarbonate sheet, acrylic mirror, LED lights, and electrical wiring. Having adopted mirrors as, as a medium to create illusions in her Infinity series of the late 2000s, Li Bu used fragmented mirrors extensively in her Civita Solis series in 2013 to today, further complicating the relationship between her artwork, the viewer, and the exhibition space. Civita Solis is a series inspired by Italian theologian, theologian and philosopher Tommaso Campanella's from 1602 book of the same name, translated as The City of the Sun. Considered an important early utopian fiction, Campanella's book describes a transparent society in a city enclosed by seven circular walls. Ironically, for Libu, Campanella's utopia gave rise to the idea of a society under complete control, a reminder of the impossibility of utopia. Deliberately constructed of fragments, fragments of mirrors, her Civita Solis installations transformed the exhibition space into an unsettling labyrinth of reflections and refractions that is both fantastic and sentimental. For this series on view are Civita Solis 3 from 2015, a fractured mirror on the wall which, in which you can look, and Civita Solis 2 from 2014, a floating landscape of mirrors through which you can walk. For this exhibition at Manege, Civita Solis 2 is half the size of the original. One of Libu's first Architectural installations, Via Negativa II is an enclosed mirror structure illuminated by rows of bulbs, which in invites viewers into a maze size space. Inside this structure, the mirrored walls create countless fictional, fictional paths and endless reflections on the viewers themselves, leading them to experience confusion and disorientation. However, it also challenges viewers and impels them to keep moving to find a way out of the deceiving images. Via Negativa Second offers different views of the self in and in relation to physical space. 
The structure's exterior is internally covered with mirrors, on which pages from psychologist Julian James book The Origin of Consciousness in the breakdown of bicameral mind are printed plainly yet in reverse. The, task, the text is thus not meant to be perused or fully understood, but only remotely hints at the artist's themes for this work. Libus has referred to the glass architecture of Paul Sherbert and Bruno, Bruno Todd's utopian visions as an inspiration. But her take on glass architecture is not transparent, but ambiguous, not futuristic, but introspective. Here you can see the installation called Via Negativa on the left, and you can see part of the inside on the right of the tail. From 2014, this is made from polycarbonate sheet, aluminum frame, acrylic and polycarbonate mirrors, stainless steel mirror, two-way mirrors, LED lighting and silk screen ink for the pages. You can see that the pages are printed on it, giving it texture. This is one of the most famous works by Libo lately. It's called Willing to be Vulnerable from 2015 and it was finished on 2020. It's an, it's an installation Willing to be Vulnerable is an installation series comprised of interconnected fabric formations such as balloons, tents, and banners that together evoke the atmosphere of a circus left abandoned. The circus is a product of the modern era that was once popular but remains largely only as part of our collective memory. This series recreates these obsolete images and images of modernity on a monumental scale. But by using lightweight and arid materials such as transparent film and tent fabric, giving them an elusive uh, quality. Notably, the shiny dirigible hung in midair, willing to be vulnerable, metalized balloon, was designed based on the infamous Hindenburg airship, which was Germany's proud symbol of progress until it caught fire and was destroyed in 1937. The futuristic balloon is made of aluminum foil and then coated with a delicate cloth that flaps like a small living creature as air blows. The Willing to be Vulnerable series requires a site-specific installation and involves creating an immersive space with enormous fabrics. It is designed to form shapes that echo a landscape, a recurring motive in Libo's art. In this picture, there's only the dirigible, there's the metallic balloon, and this is it, the the timeline of it is not quite set because every time it is recreated is almost like an, a different work. It has to be built for the space that is in. This is made from fabric, pet film, transparent TPU, acrylic paint, LED lighting and electronic wiring. This is one for of her most recent series called Perdu and is made is from 2018. This piece is made from mother of pearl and acrylic paint on lacquered wooden base panel with steel frame. Ribbons of color weave across densely worked fields in Label's newest paintings. Mother of pearl an iridescent material Bull likes because it's related to organisms that come from the inside out. Coalesces with acrylic paint in lines that spread across the canvas like veins. Playing with paradoxes both in context and material, Bose Perdu series, first shown in 2019, takes its name from the French for lost and critics from the notion of utopia. For me, utopia, utopia is, in its paradoxical essence is a nostalgic, even elegiac idea. Bull explains. You can see also more from Libo on the page. Libo Utopia Saved on Google Arts and Culture. There will be a link above, below. And this Willing to be Vulnerable, the metalized balloon, has a version on for AR 
augmented reality on a cute art. The link will be also on the video's descriptions. I invite you to take a look at it, it's quite interesting. And that's it for today, folks. Thank you so much for watching and being with us. Um, if you like this kind of video, please like and share with someone. Our intention is to insp inspire and to empower women, showing them as these amazing artists. So please subscribe, like, and I hope you see to see you soon. Bye!